Hello and welcome. Grace and peace be unto you from Charity Fellowship. Mark eleven twenty two says, And Jesus said, Have faith in God. We thank everyone for viewing us on Charity Fellowship Live TV and Facebook Live. And we pray that you have had a blessed week in the Lord, our Savior. So we bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless you today. Bless you today. We want to read our scripture today in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, beginning with verse 23. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty or before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nation, the Lord reigns. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just glorify you. We just magnify you. You're worthy of all the honor, all the power. We bow before you as your children, as sheep of your pastor. We come thanking you for loving us. Thanking you for being our creator. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Thou art omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Thou art from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. You are the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We just want to magnify you and thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, our Redeemer, our deliverer, our sanctifier, sanctifier, our justifier. We thank you for the blood that was shed. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. The blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We thank you today that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we just magnify you. We just glorify you. That Jesus, the one who was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, 
the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus, we thank you that you are alive. The nails couldn't hold you. The spear couldn't stop you. The grave could not conceal you. Jesus, you rose with resurrection power and you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. Our high priest ever living to make intercession for the saints. Thank you, Jesus, for being our advocate, our substitute, our perpetuation. Thank you that you did not leave us comfortless, but you prayed to the Father to send us another comforter, your Holy Ghost, your Holy Spirit, your Lumos, your Paraclete to lead and guide us into all truth. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, Paraclete, fill us now, quicken us now. As Paul said in Ephesians, be ye filled with the Spirit. So Father, we yield ourselves, we bow ourselves, we humble ourselves to be filled with your Holy Spirit, to lead and guide us that you might be glorified in everything we do and say thank you for this day thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy thank you for your love we pray father for those that are dealing with COVID-19 those with cancer those that were dealing with bodily ill heart disease father we pray lord for those who are sick children lord young children dealing with hospital dealing with, with, with hospital, Lord, at a young age, dealing with cancer and ill with blood diseases, Lord. We pray by your power, by your spirit, that your virtue would flow through their body. You said, ask and it shall be given. We're asking you, Father. We're seeking you, Father. We're knocking for you, Father, to heal as only you can, that they might be a witness that you are God and beside you there is none other. Pray for this country. Pray for this world. We pray for leaders, Father. We ask you by your spirit to convict their hearts. You told us to pray for them without any authority that we might lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Pray for governors. We pray for mayors. We pray for Republicans and Democrats, Lord. We pray, Father, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now bless today, Father. Let your word go forth and fall on good ground and bring forth fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. I pray that we as your people would enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise and be thankful unto you and bless your name. For the Lord is good. Yes, it is. His mercy endures for Thank you now for supplying our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We give you all the glory. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
Elohim. You are God. El Yahweh. Bless the name of the Lord today. We thank God for each and every one that's joined us in this time of worship and also in the word. Hallelujah. This morning, we ask you to turn with us to the gospel according to St. John chapter 4, and we want to read verse 50 for your hearing, St. John chapter 4 and verse 50. Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Yes. The grass withereth, the flowers fade away, the word of our God stands forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Yeah. This story today, Christ heals a nobleman's son. All right. The nobleman was a governor, a government official. I'm sorry. The nobleman was a government official. Yes. <clears throat> probably holding some high position in Herod's court. His experience reveals the various stages of faith, the kind of growing faith that every person should experience. Jesus had re-entered Canaan of Galilee, Verse 46 says that Jesus came again to Canaan of Galilee where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain noble man there whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea, into Galilee, he went to him and employed him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Verse 46 and 47 is the beginning of faith. So today I want to talk about believe the word. Believe the word. All right. Hallelujah. Faith. Seeking Jesus. And uh, contrition. This first stage is a beginning of faith. When Jesus entered the city of Canaan, a nobleman, mm -hmm. an official of the king's royal court approached Jesus. The actions of the man demonstrated exactly what is involved in a beginning faith. First, a, there was a desperate need. This man's son was at the point of death. A desperate need. A needs confront every human being. Right. Every day, someone has a need. Every hour, someone has a need. Every second, yeah. someone has a need. Eventually, the severe need arising from accidents, illness, Disease, suffering, mm -hmm. death stricken everyone. 
no one is exempt because desperate needs arrive to everyone. One may be an official in government or even the king himself. It does not matter who it is. Naaman had a need. He was a leper. Oh, beloved, the day eventually comes when every person needs help. Every person. The severe disasters of life are beyond man's control. Second of all, there was hearing about Jesus. See, you can have a need, but if you don't hear where Jesus is, you're still wondering. The man heard about Jesus, and he listened and paid attention to what he heard. Beloved, he did not turn a deaf ear to the message. Number two, he did not think himself to be too important. Number three, he did not consider the message to be foolish. And finally, he did not mock the person sharing about Jesus. See, sometimes we hinder our blessing because we turn a deaf ear. Oh, we think we're too important. Oh, we consider it just foolishness. Oh, we mock the person that's sharing about Jesus. Nextly, facing one of the severe disasters of life, the man came to Jesus. Yes, it's sad that we only come to Jesus when there's a disaster in our life. Every day we should come to Jesus. Every morning. Yes. Amen. Like Daniel. Three times a day he got up in the morning at noon and at night. Three times a day Daniel saw God. Jesus was the only person he had ever heard about that might be able to help. And I understand that because this man did not have a relationship. He had not heard the Beatitudes. He had not been there when the water was turned to wine. This man heard about Jesus. And because of the severity of his situation. See, some situations will make us come to prayer. Jesus was the only one. A, the man had to leave the side of his dying son knowing he would be gone for many hours. But his situation was critical. Next, imagine the anxiety and the fear Think about it. that his son might die while he was away. Such an act shows how strongly he believed what he heard that Jesus could help him. All right, all right. Yeah, he's a ruler, but power won't heal his son. He has people under him yeah. as a governor, but they can't heal his son. In spite of the deathful situation, he heard and he believed that if he could get to Jesus, yes. Next of all, not only the anxiety and fear of leaving his son, the man had to travel almost a day's journey to reach Jesus. It wasn't like he could get in a car. Amen. He could get a police escort, as officials do, in order to stop the traffic, in order to move the crowd to the side. Kind of like a, a, a funeral procession 
where the police moved the traffic. This man had to journey, yeah, travel to reach Jesus. Mm. Capernaum, they say, was about 20 miles from King. So he did not live there, but he heard what Jesus could do. He had to travel there, and he went on what he heard Jesus could do. Imagine, mm. if you would, uh, the concern and uh, the apprehension gripping the Father's heart every step, uh, every footprint of the way. His heart, yeah, was wondering if he should have left his son's side. But every step yeah. made him think, if I can get to Jesus, I believe what I heard. And if I can plead my case, if I can tell him how bad my son is, if I can let him know my position is not going to stop me from bowing down. My authority, my power is not going to keep me. My importance is not going to block me. The fact that he persevered and kept his eyes on the hope. I hear it in the spirit. My hope is built Oh, nothing less. Can you see this man? He's never met Jesus, but he has hope. He's never saw the water turn to wine, but he has hope. Mm, good God Almighty. Jesus shows the faith of his heart. His heart was convicted. That's why I hear the scripture says the first thing is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. See, it's got to be in the heart. Yes, sir. First of all, I hear the scripture saying, you praise me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Psalms 31 and 24 says, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Psalms 33 and 18 says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, mm. upon them that hope My in his mercy. That's all that man went on was hope. Yes. Oh, beloved, Psalms 42 and 11 says, Why art thou cast down on my soul? This man, the more he walked, his hope Hallelujah. brought up his heart. The more he walked, his hope lifted his soul. He had to leave Hallelujah. his son, but every step yes, yes. made him have hope. Why art thou cast down, O oh my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Why are you stopped yourself from praising God? Why? Are you quick on yourself to remember the word? He said, hope thou in God, yes. for I shall yet praise him yes. who is the help of my countenance and my God. You got to praise him yeah. no matter. Yeah, this man didn't know about a praise, but he heard about Jesus. Hallelujah. This man, this man Lord did not have a relationship with God, but I'm pretty sure over the years he had heard about what the God of Israel had done for them. Yes. Oh, Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope oh. is the hope the Lord is. I'm sorry. And whose hope the Lord is. He did not wrap himself in pride, nor did he allow what others might say to keep him 
of Jesus. See, we're more afraid. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. We're more afraid of what others might say about us. Yeah. What others might start talking about us than to keep our face focused like a flint on Jesus. He swallowed our beloved his pride and confessed his need in the face of all who would ridicule him. And he went to Jesus. Mm. Psalms 91 and 15 says, he called, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. When you forget about her, your pride and not worry about the ridicule, he says, I will be with him in trouble and deliver him and honor him. This was begging Jesus to help. The Greek word here, erotos, means the man just didn't say it one time. Erotos here means he kept on begging. When he got to Jesus, he didn't just say it one time and say, I'm tired. Where can I get some water? Somebody bring me some water. Somebody fan me. You don't know how. I rushed in order to meet him in case he wasn't going to stay in Canaan alone. I heard that he moves around. This man kept on begging for Jesus to meet his need. You, you got to get to the point to where you're not satisfied until you know in your spirit that God has heard your fervent cry. You got to know down in the depths of your soul that Jesus, just like Stephen's dead, stood up because of your commitment, because of your faithfulness. You got to have the assurance of who he is. Beloved, uh, this man employed him. This man, Eroto, kept on begging. Yeah, and then verse 48 to 49, listen to it if you would. Then said Jesus to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will, not, you will by no means believe. Mm. But the man, the noble man, here he is. He's erotos here. Listen to it. The noble man said, sir, he respects him. Sir. He knows that they call him Jesus. Sir, yes. come down before my child dies. Mm. This is the second stage as a persistent faith. Mm. Beloved, this man persevered even in the midst. That was faith, that was belief, and there was signs. One there are two critical lessons here I want to share with you. First is, the man said, come down and heal my son. Jesus was saying, unless I come down and show you signs and miracles, you will not believe. It is that what you are seeing, Jesus had to teach the man that his word alone was enough. See, we quote the word. We read the word. We yeah. sing the word. Yeah. Some people that wrote the word on tattoos on their body. But do you believe the word? His word alone was enough. See, sometimes we don't think the word is enough. Believe in his word. Oh, <laughs> beloved. Oh, it is something how this official and authorities, amen, uh, get beside himself. You here is a word plural here. He just wasn't talking to the man. Jesus uh, addresses these words to the Gentiles as a whole and not to just the noble man. All right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gentiles was fundamentally flawed. Why? Because it disregarded the uh, the son of God and entered in the need of a constant display of miraculous signs. 
They had such an attitude uh, uh, represented the deepest state of unbelief. You did that, Jesus, but you got to show me something else. You, I, I know, I know you turned the water in the wine, but what can you do for me now? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get beside ourselves. Jesus, bless us. Amen. With a home, man. And we start begging for other things. Why can't we stop sometime and tell him thank you? Thank you that it is as well as it is. Thank you that you provided the way you provided. Believe in his word was what was going to assure the request. If you want God to meet your need, then you got to believe in the word of God. When you can't get to the preacher, the word is there. When you can't get with your prayer warrior, the word is there. When you can't find anyone on YouTube, the word is there. When you can't find no one on Facebook, the word is there. When you can't find anyone on Twitter, the word is there. When you can't reach out to nobody else, the word is there. Believe when the word of God, his word alone is enough. Belief is to perceive signs and wonders. Amen. You hear Jesus was addressing both the, the man and the crowd. He wanted the crowd to get the message as well. See, sometimes we think it's just for us. And God just not trying to get to us. He's trying to get to those also around nah, us. Nah, nah. Think about it. Nah, a desperate nah, ration is here. The man was in no position to argue. See, sometimes we want to argue. We want to state what we think and how we believe. Is the situation desperate enough to where you won't argue with God? You won't try to tell him you understand how far I came. You don't understand my position. You don't understand how loyal I been. The man here uh, was desperate. A severe disaster had stricken his life. He believed Jesus was the only one who could help him. And he was determined uh, yeah, to secure Jesus' help. He cried out, Lord, come down. Uh, my child died. The man did not allow Jesus' rebuke to deter him. See, sometimes when we get rebuked, we get mad, we get angry. We don't like what God tells us. We don't like how God chastises us. We don't like what God is trying to straighten up in our lives. And we get angry and we block the blessing. But this man, uh, he was desperate. Shines and wonders the boys he were, were not uh, as important as believing Jesus. See, sometimes we get caught up in the healing and in the signs and wonders. But what we don't understand is if we don't believe Jesus, signs and wonders follow. Help me, God. See, you might say, oh, it doesn't sound right, preacher. I need God to deliver me. Well, start believing Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus was baptized by John, by John the Baptist in the Jordan. Jesus, beloved, God opened the heavens and said, this is my beloved Son and whom I'm well pleased. Jesus, if you believe Jesus, signs and wonders and healing show up. A man's eternal salvation was at stake. And the man had to believe to be saved. B, the man was helped because he persisted. You see, sometimes you got to keep on praying for your heart to be delivered. You got to keep on praying for your mind to be delivered. You got to keep on praying for God to deliver your speech. See, some people want to say, I got 
a potty mouth or I got a dirty mouth. You got to pray for God to clean up your mouth. <laughs> I can pray. Oh, you don't understand. I just think like that all the time. If if I think it, I'm gonna say it. No, you got to pray to God and ask Him Amen. to control bitter water. James said, and sweet water can't come out of the same fountain. You got to ask God to control you. This man needed help, and his persistence, persistence, was absolutely necessary, beloved. In securing yeah. the Lord's help. Yeah. And here it was. Yeah. Persistence showed that one really recognized and acknowledged his need and really believed God can and will help. Yeah. See, you've got to start believing God can and will help. Quit worrying about it. It looks like it's getting worse. I can imagine if the man had a cell phone and he was coming, they would tell him, look like your son is turning for the worse. You need to come on back. Come on back. And because it looks like he's not going to make it. Uh, if this man would have had someone to ride back and forth like they did with the Pony Express, <laughs> one going and one coming and saying, you better stop. You might as well get on the back of my horse. And we need to get you there because your son is about to take his last breath. But this man heard about Jesus. And since he heard about Jesus, his persistence showed that he believed in what Jesus could do. If a man ceases to ask, he shows that he does not believe God will answer. This man did not allow the Lord's hesitation to stop him. Do you hear me? See, we get upset because the Lord doesn't show up when we want him to. But if we will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, as much as we know as our labor is not in vain in the Lord. He didn't know Jesus was going to say, let alone ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Not and it shall be open unto you. He didn't know Jesus was going to say, for everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. He didn't know that labor of Hebrews 11 and 6 was going to say, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All he knew is that he needed to get to God. Yeah. He didn't know uh, the scriptures. He had not written them on the table of his heart. He had not bind them around the doorpost. That's just, as Isaiah said in Isaiah 26 and 4, trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. This man, all he knew is that he had to be persistent. Uh, he had to make sure that he wrote up. He had to beg. Uh, he wasn't too proud to please a beg. And then, beloved, our verse, verse 50. Verse 50 says, uh, Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lived. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. And he went his way. I'm glad he said the man believed the word. Beloved, because he didn't debate. I didn't come here for you to tell me. I came here to get you. Don't you see this chariot? Don't you see the people with me? We're going to escort you to my son. This man did not debate. You mean I came, I rushed, I went through the dirt, through the dust. I came through the heat. And you're going to tell me, go your way? Oh, this third stage here was trusting, obeying. Working faith. See, 
when you obey what the word says and quit trying me myself, quit trying to justify and twist the word to where it'll do what we want us, what we wanted to do. First of all, the charge and the promise of Jesus was forceful. Jesus said, the charge, go thy way. Can you imagine when Jesus said it, how the man began to turn? He didn't begin to wonder because creation, just like God had said, let there be light. Here it was, Jesus said, go thy way. Yeah, and, and it said, and light showed up. This man knew that God was speaking to him. He didn't question. He didn't doubt. He didn't wonder. And then he said, the promise that was the charge, go thy way. And the promise, thy son lived. This man turned in faith. This man turned in hope. This man turned in peace. This man turned in joy. Why? Because he that is the beginning and the end. He that is the first and the last. The Bible says in John 1 and 14, and the, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This man turned on that belief. The man believed in Jesus' word and his obedience. He believed the word that Jesus had spoken, and he went his way. The ideal is that of instant, yeah, yeah, instantaneously, yeah, faith and action. He believed immediately. He didn't try to justify. He turned immediately, head, headed home to his son. His action is faith. The Lord loves compassion, concern, that Jesus cares for those who had desperate need. The Lord's knowledge, omnipotence, uh, omnisciency, excuse me, omnisciency, that Jesus knew his son was healed, although he was 20 miles away. The Lord's power, he is omnipotent, that Jesus had the power to heal his son even from a great distance. See, it does not matter our geographical location. What matters is, do we believe the Lord when he says, thy son lives? When he says, go in peace. When he says, trust with all your heart. When he says, look unto me. When he says, have faith in God. Oh, what would happen if we would only believe? Job said in Job 42 and 2, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withheld from thee. Beloved, both faith and obedience were necessary to receive the promise and help of Jesus. The man would not have received help if Jesus, of Jesus, if he had not accepted and believed the word of Jesus, or if he had rebelled and acted childish. See, we have to look under Jesus. Yeah, the man could have easily acted like so many when they bring their need to God. Yes. Your word is not enough. Oh, beloved, the man's son is not healed. He is there in Capernaum. And you are far away. No place close to him. How could he be healed when you're so far? You have not even seen him. Come, visit, show yourself. Stand before us. Help us. Yeah, such, of course, is pleading to God for help. But it is not crying to God in faith. See, we've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Not basing one's request upon the word and promise of Christ. You see, if he's going to be healed, he's got to trust God. If he's going to be delivered, he's got to believe in the Lord's love. He's got to believe in the Lord's compassion. And he's got to believe in the Lord's concern. Jesus cared and told him, 
go thy way. Jesus cared and told him, thy son liveth. I got to ask you today, has the Lord ever charged you with a promise? <laughs> yeah. It is asking God to help, but it is also, uh, yeah, dedicating how God is to help. Don't try to dictate what God's going to do. All we have to do is dedicate ourselves to the Lord. Surrender to the Lord. Yeah, it is telling God how he is to act instead of accepting and acting upon God's word. We've got to believe the word, beloved. There is no real faith apart from obedience and work. Can I say it again? You've got to be obedient to the God's word, and then you've got to work like and believe in God. James said, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Help me, Lord Jesus. Matthew said in Matthew 19 and 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. See, we got to understand God puts us and allows us to be in some impossible situations so we can turn our focus back to the word. We can turn our focus back to God. Luke said in Luke 1 and 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Oh, beloved, we've got to believe what God can do. And when the man obeyed Christ, when the man turned from Jesus, when the man Turn on go thy way. When the man turned on thy son living, the man turned in faith. The man turned in obedience. And as he was going, since he turned on the charge, since he turned on the promise, as he was going, he had left Jesus. He found him, but Jesus sent him back on faith. He saw him, but Jesus had sent him back on a promise. And when he turned, he was acting on the obedience of Christ. He had received the word, and he walked in the glorious good news that Jesus said, Thy son live it. Help me, Lord Jesus. See, when we go what God says, and don't worry whether or not it sounds like we wanted to sound, he asked at the exact hour the boy recovered. He had received a message to tell him, your son has turned for the good. Your son opened his eyes. Your son is raising up. The man knew that it wasn't the doctors. The man knew it wasn't those around the bed. We wanted to know when did the boy turn? When did the boy change? He wanted to be certain. He wanted to be absolute. He was reaching out for strong faith in Jesus. He was saying, I just want to know when it happened. Because of what I heard, he was full of joy, full of thankfulness to Jesus. He wanted to believe on him more and more. Good God Almighty, because he believed, that was a witness in 53 and 54. Because he believed, his house was changed. The man witnessed to the whole house. I saw him, y'all. And the way he said, go, I saw him, y'all. And the way he said, he lives. Joy fill my heart. When the Lord speaks to you, when the word is revolutionized in your heart, in your soul, the man was saying, I committed myself to what he said. I was a witness to hear him speak. Yes, y'all, I know my position, but that had nothing to do with what he said. His faith was a witness. His faith uh, was to trust. Uh, his faith uh, in what Jesus said. Uh, he believed uh, in the word of God. Uh, and when you believe uh, God's word, uh, God will uh, move in your heart. Uh, God will uh, move in your soul. Uh, just believe uh, heaven and earth 
to pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Just trust in his word. If you'll trust his word today and read it, God will move in your soul like never before. His word tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. That the world through him might be saved. You've got to get to the point to where there's nothing more important. Don't you hear Jesus saying when he was tempted in the garden? Man shall not live by bread alone. He reached back in Deuteronomy in order to let us see. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When we trust his word. Not part-time, not sometime, not every now and then, but standing on it. Used to have a song that's coming up, standing on the promises of God. When we stand on his word, God will move in our life. Beloved today, if you do not know Jesus, have faith in what he said to you today. On the screen you'll see where you can text us or you see the email, you can email us. If you're saved and you want Jesus to come into your heart, you can receive him today. Or you desire prayer, text us. We want to pray with you. You got to be persistent. You can't give up because it didn't happen. This minute, this hour, this day, this week, this month, this year. You've got to be persistent. Yes. You're all talks. you got to keep on begging until the Lord answers your prayer. Jesus. How much do you want him to meet your needs? How much do you want him to show up in your situation? Don't let what people say stop you. At Jairus' house, Jesus had to put them out. Some people, you got to get away from you in order to get God to charge you and move in your life. I bless you today. And then be a witness. Let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Believe the word. Acts it. Brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy household. This governor will never know his name. This noble man, because he turned on the charge. Walked in the promise. Not only did he, but his whole house. God bless you. Praise God for you. Is our prayer today. Hallelujah. Now, beloved, we ask that we do a 5 p.m. prayer on our conference line. We ask you to join us. We're praying for our church. We're in need of a new sanctuary, a permanent place. Amen. And we need, and we're asking you to be a blessing. Right now, we don't have a place. And we're asking you to bless, to support. So you can pray with us in five. But we're also asking you to be a blessing, to partner with us. Amen. To share with us during this time. Amen. And support this ministry that we might be able to share the word of God around the world.
this city, this state, this country. God has blessed you. Amen. And if all you can do is pray, we understand. But we ask you if you can give, be a blessing. Help us. Go forward. Step out by faith. Some of you can give 100, 500, thousands, even more. Sow into this ministry. He said if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. So we ask you to sow. And that we might continue to reach children in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, young adults, single parent mothers, amen, couples, seniors. We ask you to be a blessing. God bless you today. And we thank God for you. Thank God for our friends that are watching us around the world and in the United States of America. We praise God for you. You can go, you see it on the screen, to our web page, or you can do cash app. Amen. And give. We thank you today for your love, your support, and your generosity. Amen. We praise God for you. We depend and we continue to thank you for your blessing. Now, beloved, you can watch us again on YouTube at 3 p.m. or on Facebook at 6 p.m. Visit us on our YouTube channel, Charity Fellowship. Subscribe, like, share us with family and friends. Now, we bless you today in that name that's above every name. We praise God for you in all that you do. Remember, believe the word. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. To him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever Amen. And then we bless you. We come and we thank God for you. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with his countenance. That is, the Lord look upon you with favor. And the Lord, Yahweh, give you peace. Shalom. Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah.